meet me at the dark. Finally, I can see you crystal clear. You know what, have fun, you know, cherish the moment. Um, this is a real special group of, uh, of athletes that we've got going on in, in the pack here this weekend and out on the road. And, and uh, you know, they've got an opportunity here to, to, to generate memories that'll, that'll last a lifetime for them and friendships that, uh, you know, they'll, they'll probably take to their graves with them. You know, any time where you can be part of a championship, um, it's, it's really, really special. Yeah. Everybody's here for you guys. So let's see you guys win out there or play as best as you can and uh, we're all here to support you. Have fun. This is part of your experience um, as a Husky athlete, so enjoy it. Do the best that you can, but remember, you're, you're there to win, but you're also there to have a lot of fun. So, and I wish you all the best. Uh, good luck. You deserve everything that's coming to you. We have all the tools necessary to be successful and uh, they just have to trust in themselves and trust in their teammates, trust in their preparation. Um, because everything's there. It's just a matter of, um, you know, putting it out there on the floor when the time comes. In the 2010-2011 season, the Husky Athletics women's basketball team seemed unstoppable. With a great deal of determination, a lot of heart, and strong will, the Huskies went on to earn a 22-2 and regular season record. Their impressive program best season included being ranked in the top five in the country with the last seven weeks at number one. The Huskies quickly locked up first place in the Canada West Conference and had their first ever opportunity to host the Canada West Final Four Championship after defeating the Calgary Dinos in a quarterfinal series. With the team solidifying the much coveted home playoff spot, the attention now turned to the Husky Athletics Administration staff, who began the tedious process of bringing the championship to life in a very short amount of time. Husky Athletics employs eight full-time staff members to help administer a successful season for each of the elite 15 teams at the University of Saskatchewan. Before the fans hit the stands and basketballs start to bounce, Adrian Healy, Athlete Services Officer, acts as the local liaison to each visiting team. She coordinates with local hotels, the Canada West head office, and visiting institutions to give each competing team a memorable experience and ensure fair play. So there's, there's a couple different people that we work with, um, all of the medals, the championship banner, the rocks, they all arrive from right from the company, so we get those directly to us. Um, what else happens? We have to send out a bulletin that tells everybody where they're staying, what kind of transportation they need, what jerseys they're wearing, and so on. So that goes out to all the athletic directors. That's kind of your main ones right off the bat. Everything happens Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So by today, which is Thursday, you just are kind of on cruise control waiting until everybody gets here and hopefully we don't have any problems. Throughout the season, Adrian keeps the athletes in check by ensuring all 400 Husky athletes are registered in at least 18 credit units to be eligible to compete, arranges all travel plans for the teams, and processes athlete scholarships. On any given weekend, Husky Athletics can have up to six sports competing at home in four different venues. Event coordinator Tara Hall ensures each fan that walks through the gates at any of the Husky Athletics venues has a unique experience. On a weekend like this Final Four Women's Basketball Championship, Tara employs more than 30 student staff at this one venue alone, just to ensure the smooth operation of the event. Oh, I have um, security positions, I have ticket sellers, I have uh, ticket takers and scanners. Um, down, downstairs I have um, the announcer, of course, color screens, amber screens, um, clock, shot clock, scorebook um, and then of course I get the help from the staff downstairs uh, cleaning the floors you name it everything that you can think of is I have somebody doing it or someone helping me look after it. When tip-off is at six o'clock Tara's night begins well before. Um, that is the most hectic part of the, part of the week for me. Um, I'll, I'll come in as early as I can uh, making sure all the scripts are written, they're already done. If I have in-stand announcers, they have their own separate script. Um, all the positions that I need students in, are they in fact full? Do we have people sitting in them? Um, is there any issues? Um, sometimes, because students come and go, we have some new students in those positions. So 
I may have to help them in that position or maybe my student supervisor that helps me look after them is sitting beside them. Um, running around, Katie, like setting the up the gym, um, tickets, everybody has their floats. They're ready to open up the, the front gate. We have 50-50 float money. We have 50, or we have uh, ticket uh, money, uh, float money. Um, downstairs on the court, signage is being hung up or we're putting the tables out. Does the amber screen uh, work? Do we have the right logos for the weekend? Is the color screen working? Do we have the right logos for that as well? Um, does everybody have the radios on? Is the sponsor stuff here? Is my promotional staff ready? Is the instant crowd or instant announcer is ready to give her? Like, um, and then it goes pretty much like a blur until the last whistle or the end of the clock when the game's done. And then it's a whole process of cleaning all that up and putting it all away and getting it ready for the next day. On Friday, March 4th, the fans began to stream into the pack the physical activity complex on campus. Friday night is semi-final night for the four teams vying to hang the conference banner on their wall. The Huskies kicked off the weekend with an 89-55 win over the four-seeded University of Fraser Valley Cascades. The game was followed by the number two Regina Cougars versus the number three University of Alberta Pandas. The Cougars went on to win the game 72-68. The Cougars' victory pitted them against their provincial rivals, the hometown Huskies, in the final game the next night. When the lights go down in the pack, they continue to burn in the office of Sports Information Director Nicole Becker. I'm, um, I'm really busy on game day night um, and game day during the day is not necessarily my busiest time um, so I kind of call it always my calm before the storm where I have you know maybe a half a day to sit down and look at what's coming up next week uh, in this instance where the teams will be going uh, next week and maybe concentrate on a team that I kind of ignored maybe this week because I've been so busy with the home team. Um, so I get that extra time to do projects and then uh, game time hits and I'm in there bang in my seat um, ready to watch ready to watch the game so I watch the game I oversee our webcast I oversee our uh, game tape exchange program I oversee the statisticians making sure uh, they're catching everything right and then put help um, just everybody put out little fires so for example last weekend I helped a, a person in a wheelchair who didn't necessarily know where they could sit um, so I just stepped in and made sure that person knew where to go and where to sit. Um, and then I'm here till sometimes 1, 2 in the morning, depending on how many teams are playing and, and what's at home, writing the game stories, posting stories on um, our website, making sure everybody, including media and the people across the Canada West and CIS, know our scores and our results. With the first night drawing to a close, the spotlight is still on the team and their 12-year head coach, Lisa Tomatis. The hard work of Husky Athletics is never overlooked from the bench. Their support and dedication allows Lisa to focus solely on their goal of winning. Oh, it, it means everything. It's, uh, I mean, it's probably one of the main reasons why I'm still coaching here it is because the support that we have from everyone on staff. Um, to be able to focus your entire energy on coaching your team, on preparing your team, and not to have to worry about any of the details about um, you know putting on the production, putting on the championship, it's um, it's it's phenomenal. You know, it's uh, the support that we get here has just been first rate. Can't say enough about it. As far as um, you know, just helping us to achieve what we have been able to do so far, and it's it's so so important, and it's um, it's very much appreciated. That's for sure. <laughs> It's bringing me out the dark Finally I can see you crystal clear 